and our aspirations for this country uh, remain fairly similar. The reason why I'm asking this question is because the things that took place yesterday are very intriguing. First of all, Musali Mudavad was uh, having negotiations with Peter Kenneth. And yes. they were supposed to go and sign a pact at Uhuru Park. Yes. And the, 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 the media, uh, Musali Mudavad is media uh, te technocrats, issued a statement to that effect. Then all of a sudden you see him uh, uh, signing agreements with you. Maybe they discovered at the very last minute that uh, they were not really like-minded after all. All I'm saying is it's a question of uh, where a party's um, agenda for the development of this country and aspirations for Kenyans as a whole uh, who are closer or closest. But Mushmiwa, how did it just happen the last minute? Did Musalia mm -hmm. and Ruto and Uhuru become like-minded just yesterday? Mm -hmm. They've been at it for the last one month and they were not coming together. So what cracked it? In my, my proposal, okay, my, the, 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 the thinking in the public domain is that that alliance, your coalition was terrified by what happened at KICC when uh, Raila Odinga and Kalonzo came together. So he said, no, 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 we have to go for this man. And that is how he went to snatch him. Not at all. In fact, um, when we struck a deal, that is the URP TNA deal, we were already the winners. Politics is a game of numbers, <laughs> everybody knows. Right. And with that, the coming together of those two parties gave us 65% of the vote. Mm. You just take count that's, of That's it. your projection. Oh, yeah, it's very clear because you look at the voting rationale, Kenya's voting rationale. What does a Kenyan consider before he votes? Right. Whether, Tell us. Whether you like it or not, we tend to consider first where we come from. Right. Whether you call it tribe or whatever, I don't know, but where one comes from. And then the second consideration is uh, the closeness of uh, where one comes from with the next community or any other community. And thirdly, religion, particularly amongst Muslims, there's that tendency of a Muslim voting for a Muslim. There is that tendency. Right. So, so <coughs> a smart politician will analyze the voting rationale when you analyze the voting rationale for Kenyans, the picture becomes extremely clear. TNA, URP, already had 65% of the vote. Based on ethnic arithmetic, and not necessarily a Absolutely, and not necessarily because we, we, should be, we should not make a, It's a fallacy to compare ourselves with countries which are more homogeneous in terms of the population that they have. Here we have communities which have even individual or community aspirations. And that's where the difference comes. A pastoral community has totally different aspirations from Nairobi's urban community. Now, you, one needs to analyze those aspects and then come up with the voting rationale. Okay, you say you, had, you already had 65% by your own arithmetic. Uh, mm -hmm. So why did you uh, uh, think that you needed Msalia? And yes. why is he being offered the ticket? We want to, one, demystify um, the perception that uh, Kenya's governance rests in two communities only. That is a very, very important. In other words, our coalition depends, believes in bringing all Kenyans together. But, but that goes you, against what you've just told us could. in terms of the ethnic arithmetic that you've been computing. But also, um, you know, you say it's a fallacy to compare us, you know, to other homogeneous uh, societies. But there's a huge outcry, um, you know, uh, for the de-ethnicization of ethnic politics in Kenya. And here you are telling us that that really is the basis of your alliance. Okay. There are two situations here. One, you look at the realistic situation, and two, you look at the ideal. What you're telling me is the ideal situation, where we like to arrive at. But before you sort out and arrive to the ideal situation, you have to take cognizance of the realistic situation. There is a realistic situation here. You've got to, 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 to accept it and then see how you can make some inputs
to arrive to the ideal. So you're being yes. pragmatic. Let me ask you this about Moselia's presence in my team. For many, many months, there was a group, G7 group. Where are you a member? Moselia was not there. He was not in the G7. He was always a part in this um, UDF. And all of a sudden, you give him a ticket. And the people who are close to G7, can, um, uh, Eugene Omaru and all the others, mm -hmm. are now off. So what is this like-mindedness you're talking about? The, the G7 was a creation of the, of the media, I must have But they used to meet together and have We did meetings. not even use that terminology amongst ourselves. All we're saying is we're inviting parties and individuals whose aspirations for this country, um, whose aspirations were very close. Now, Musalia Mudavadi's aspirations for this country were very, very close to ours. But maybe at that early stage, he preferred to take um, a lone ranger's approach, if I may use that word. Not derogatorily, but with a lot of yes, respect. Yes. However, <coughs> later on, we realized that uh, there is even greater strength in unity. So we came together, not because that was triggered by any other development. We know early in the morning yesterday, the other side got together, put together many members of parliament and uh, small and big parties together. But that was an exercise in futility because they're fully aware of the fact that we already had the numbers in terms of the voting rationale in the country for for us to produce a president and also to control parliament and senate. Okay, we have to take a break now. Um, uh, you're watching Cheche live on Citizen TV. Our guest this morning is the Environment Minister and Matuga MP, Honorable Jirao Ali Wakwere. If you've got any questions for him, do SMS us on 2442 or tweet Cheche underscore TV. When we return, we delve more into how this alliance uh, plans to run Kenya while, uh, you know, two of its key members clear their names at the International Criminal Court. Kapilka za siku ya Christmas inoro FM shi watu kinotana kushirikiana na kampuni ya Safaricom tumekuandalia msafara wa siku mbili tarehe 7 tutaanzia safari hapa Nairobi tukielekea Nakuru Joro Igato Mauche Kihiko Likia Maunaro na kisha tumalizie mwisho wa lami siku ya pili msafara utapitia Gilgil Naivasha Longono na kumalizia my my Jo, ujishindie zawadi Kemkem kem kutoka Safaricom. Utatumbuizwa na mwalimu wa kahafu na Brand Gidai. Huku ukiwa na fursa ya kukutana na watangazaji wako wa Inoro FM. Ni msafara wa kukata na shoka wa Inoro FM wakishirikiana na Safaricom. Welcome back to Cheche, the program where opinion counts. We're live on Citizen TV. Environment Minister and Matuga MP, the Honorable Chirao Ali Makwere, is our guest this morning. And he is a key strategist um, for the United Republican Party of uh, uh, Eldred North MP, William Ruto. And of course, we know that William Ruto now um, will be the um, vice presidential running mate on a TNA URP um, a UDF uh, Republican Congress uh, ticket, but um, and Mr. Kenyatta um, could be the presidential flag bearer, but they're both facing charges at the International Criminal Court. And the question remains why you and others would encourage um, people with um, such serious crimes, um, uh, alleged to have committed such serious crimes, um, to contest um, for national office um, instead of waiting for due process? Uh, my concern here is uh, very few of us read the Constitution of Kenya. That's the supreme law. The first sentence refers to the people. It empowers the people of Kenya to make the ultimate decision on whatever 
they want to see that for this country. Yes, our colleagues are facing charges at the ICC. But the ICC is not the body that will block any one of them from standing for a public office in the country. The powers to do that are in our constitution. We are only assuming that they do not qualify to run for office. They are just suspects. They are not guilty. And unless proven guilty, we don't see why we should deny them their democratic rights and even the right of Kenyans to choose their leaders, including the two. So people are playing politics and trying to influence decisions maybe. We know there are some people who are running to court. So this debate, to me, is one that is geared <coughs> towards influencing a decision by somebody who will probably block them. Who Which is playing is politics? Is it, is it Kenyans or, you know, the, the, the two suspects? Because no one is saying that they are guilty of anything. But they're saying, wait, clear your names, um, get yourselves elected legitimately and without any uh, scar, any blemish on your record um, for the sake of Kenyans, for the sake of the country. Just because they are suspects and we block them, it does make sense. But this Mr. is a double you, interpretation. You, you, you're, you're, you're a diplomat. You've served. You know international law. You know the f how foreign there relations are, are being conducted in today's world. And the consequences of having a suspect of the ICC as president of a country. You know the case of Sudan. You know what has happened with other suspected uh, uh, you know, uh, criminals in, the other, in other countries from uh, Congo. Dear uh, Jean Bemba was a, a, a vice president. He got <coughs> hold to the... I mean, there's no beginning, no end. Right. But one international community will say this, another one says that. But okay. our guiding, um, we should be guided by our constitution. We should be guided by our constitution. That is what I'm trying to say. When you say, what do Kenyans want, let me read you a few text messages. This from Robert. Mr. Kofi Annan has warned that Kenya risks being isolated. Are we ready for the sanctions? Do you think Kenya is an island? This is another viewer. Put Kenyans into trouble through sanctions. And the question, you know, um, following on to from me, David's point about international sa um, uh, sanctions, about, uh, you, you know, access to credit and the welfare of 40 million Kenyans, um, if we elect people who... Uh, should be at The Hague or are at The Hague answering questions because, of course, The Hague is an international uh, court. With due respect to Kofi Annan, the simple sentence that uh, Kenya risks being whatever. Isolated. Isolated. That is threatening our nation. That is a hate speech. By the way, <laughs> 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 no, it isn't hate speech. Well, you know, how, how can a person of that standing threaten Kenyans? He is not threatening that is a hate speech. No, he's he giving a warning with some assumptions which have not yet been quantified. In other words, he's projecting a threat towards us. Okay, let, let's, let's, let's say that this, is sir. totally against our constitutional Mr. Annan is not threatening Kenyans, let's be clear. And it's politics to say that Mr. Annan is threatening Kenyans by warning us against the repercussions of having people with, uh, who are facing international criminal, uh, uh, international um, allegations. Um, what uh, is the interpretation of somebody of that standing coming to Kenya and says, now watch it you Kenyans. If you elect XYZ, you risk being isolated. But that, and that, that's a fact. I warn you. <laughs> but it's a fact. That certainly that is, is a fact. fact. No, no, a hang fact. on. Of course, it, 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 why it, are we it's being a threatened? fact, as Wotegi it says, but it also could be that he has been in charge of the UN body. He has seen this done. Countries like Eritrea, Zimbabwe, Equatorial Guinea, Sudan are pariah states. And this is what you risk um, putting Kenyans through if this goes ahead. Are we electing ke leaders in Kenya to please the international community, or are we electing leaders in Kenya to ensure that we achieve our national agenda of but development? Kenya is can, can, we, can, we, can we achieve international Peace agenda and without international? Can we achieve? achieve can we? Wh whom can we, we live in sanctions? Wh whom are we threatening by electing the two? Forty million. The forty Kenyans. million of us. No. Yes. In which? Because the forty million will decide, and the vast majority 
if they are chosen as our leaders, the vast majority would have spoken that, look, we are the majority, this is a democratic country, these are the people who want to see lead the country. Okay. We are happy with them. Let and then you bring in the international community to say, no, 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 no. Okay. Despite let, let the fact way. that the majority would like them to be our leaders, we would like to please the international community. Let's Look, ask the question from Don, which is, what happens if the ICC suspects are found guilty after winning the elections? If this alliance was genuine, then they should tell us how they would handle such a situation should it happen. That is making an assumption of an assumption. I'm not prepared to talk of what if. It, it, it's a question of like saying, what if I don't go to heaven? I mean, look, you are making assumptions that you cannot even control. So it is not even. Well, they, they expect to be elected. Let's put it this way. They expect to be elected. Both yeah. Ruto and Uru becomes prime, pre president and deputy president. On the, in April, both of them are supposed to go because they have to go. And unless, of course, they, they say they, they don't recognize the Rome Statute. They will go as prime pre president and deputy president. What who will be in, in charge of the country? At that time, we'll leave it to Kenyans, Kenyans the vast majority. In other words, by electing the president and deputy president. Yes. We cross the bridge and we get to it. That, 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 that would be like a referendum. Kenyans will have told the world that, look, these are our leaders. These are the people who have chosen to lead us. Please do not interfere with our democratic rights. Which means the those, world, crime, those crimes the they world, committed, the, world, the, the crimes they suspected to have committed, therefore become washed. Committed against who? The international community? Against Kenyans. Aha, uh -huh, but it will be the same the Kenyans victims, who will decide. The victims, the victims. With respect, sir, you're not answering the question. What happens if a President Kenyatta and a Deputy President William Ruto are at The Hague defending themselves and there's no one left in the country to run it? Yeah. What happens what in happens? that scenario? Then the world will have interfered with Kenya's democratic rights. In what sense? They are required. Their presence is required that's, at The Hague. That's not an assumption, Waziri. That, it is a fact that they have, the, the, well, the, the, the case commences have signed the Rome Statute. in April. And it's a fact that I'm they have the signed the who letter. signed the Rome Statute yes. on behalf of Kenya when yes. I was the foreign minister. Yeah. And I'm making the right interpretation. If they go to that extent, then they will have interfered with the democratic rights of Kenyans. Who? Which the international community. Which extent? No, ICC. Precisely. ICC would have interfered. Precisely. The matter is still pending that we know. Because whom, for whom are the ICC intervening in that, this matter? The crime become for Kenyans. And if Kenyans now have decided that, now look. But do you know that Kenya We're is not, not you know, in, uh, cohesive on that issue? You're I mean, there are different the positions. Question. Hang on. We're going round and let round me, in let circles. Let me get the question right. Round and round in circles about philosophical um, uh, points. If Ruto and Kenyatta are at The Hague, who yes. is in charge of Kenya? If Ruto, they must go uh, in Nepal. Kenyans yeah. will be in charge of their country. Who? If they have to go. The Matatu driver, not, not me? If, not no. if. Why are you who? putting one if? It Those... It is not a if they have a date. Know. Okay, they have a date. Let, Please let us understand. They have a date. Let, 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 so they will have to go. Let me be very clear. You go to the constitution. Every time you, you feel you cannot get an answer, you go back to the constitution of Kenya. Okay. If by any chance, if by any unfortunate development they have to go to um to the Hague while Kenyans It's not unfortunate. It is, there is a date. Yeah, it would be unfortunate Let's if Kenyans, by that time, would have elected them as the leaders, and then the ICC insists that they appear at The Hague. That would be an unfortunate development because the ICC and the international community would be denying Kenyans their democratic rights because mm -hmm. the ICC is intervening on behalf of Kenyans. Let's put it this way. But the same Let's Kenyans <laughs> would have said, we want these two to be our sir, leaders. Um, um, so who would be interfering no, with no, those no, rights? No, 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 with respect, sir. Um, you're playing with our minds. Um, <laughs> we have our president and deputy president at The Hague defending themselves. Who was in charge? Is it the Senate Majority Leader or, you know, Senate Leader, uh, Speaker of the Senate, rather? Is it the Parliamentary um, Majority Leader? Who is in charge while the President and Deputy President are out of the country? If we go back to the Constitution. I think the hierarchy is clearly spelled out. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't see any sort of um, uh, irony in Kenya losing both its President um, and Deputy President for a term you know, while they defend themselves? There is a slight gap in our analysis here. Mm -hmm. My question is, for whom 
is the ICC intervening or involved in this scenario? On behalf, of, not on behalf of Kenya. Suppose, suppose Fine, on behalf of Kenyans. On behalf of Kenyans, so, because but Kenyans fail to do it. the same Kenyans, on behalf of Kenyans in a democratic scenario, but then the same Kenyans would probably have decided that the two would be the preferred leaders. So when they decide, then the ICC and others will be interfering in the democratic what rights. I gather. What about other, other, other suspects, like Sun? The other suspects were supposed to go. They never did. What do you say about them? About... Uh, yeah, no, no, they, they are, it's not only Ruto and the Uru, the others. The others... Madaura, the there is Sun. What I'm saying is they are not going to go against the ICC. That no. one I can confirm to you. However, the ICC will have to deal with Kenyans' aspirations. The majority in they a democratic are, are two, right. Are two so are not Kenyans will ask, why is the international world denying us our democratic right? We've chosen our leaders, and they are removing our leaders. You, and what do you, you see, say about Mudaura so and Sang? They'll have to address that. What do you say about Mudaura and Sang, who are not presidential candidates? Will they go or they not go? But I said at the very beginning that uh, the two will not contravene the ICC's demands. Which, they, which means they will go. However, oh yes, however, before they go, the ICC, if it is a truly democratic institution, will have to look at the aspirations of Kenyans because if Kenyans by that time would have elected them, then the ICC and the international world will be interfering with the democratic right, the choice of leadership for Kenyans. Okay, I think that... Uh, when we reach at that the stage, I, the constitution has got to be read again. And I think the constitution is not for being Kenya. entirely honest. Yes, uh, I am. I yes, get I am. the point that uh, you are taking us around on a matter that the party or the coalition has thoroughly thought through. Having thought through, yesterday the coalition decided to go and fetch Musalem Dabadi and come and install him on the ticket of the uh, coalition that you have formed because of this reality, which you do not want to accept here, that in fact that is the reason they you have brought in Musalem Mudawadi to bridge uh, that uh, uh, potential situation where the president and the deputy president, if they are so elected, will be out of the country, so that Musalem actually is coming to be president, uh, the presidential uh, candidate on your coalition, and so that even if Uhuru is the majority leader and William Ruto is the deputy president, they can be away, but the president will be sitting. Is that not the accurate position, that, Mr. Mokwe? More than anything else, we want to prove to the world that Kenya is a very, very united country, that the notion of tribalism is not there, and we are creating greater security for our people. When you bring the two communities, which uh, were at loggerheads after elections 2007, together, in the manner we have done, surely, I think if there was uh, a Nobel Peace Prize for people who bring Mr. communities Mokwere, together, is my postulation the correct? Very, is my postulation highly. correct or not regarding no, that format? No, your 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 postulation is totally wrong because <laughs> yours is based on the ICC. Ours is based on the country that we want to bring greater harmony. We want to bring greater unity. We want to bring a situation where Kenyans will feel proud of their nation, that uh, it's not a question of uh, um, imagining that uh, there are only two communities who are governing this country. Yeah. Okay, so why we, we've left it open for Kenyans to decide who will be our president. You, you're, you're confusing me um, because you began by talking about the ethnic arithmetic and the yes. fact that the reality of Kenya is that uh, we vote along uh, tribal patterns. And then you are now telling us that uh, you want to convince everybody um, that uh, tribalism doesn't exist. No, Hence no. the uh, bringing together of these two communities that were at loggerheads. How do you convince us that this is I not... I told you at the um, very beginning... Uh, an arrangement friends, of convenience. No, mm -hmm. I said right at the beginning mm -hmm. that there are two scenarios. Mm -hmm. the, there is the realistic situation mm -hmm. and the ideal, ideal situation. situation. The realistic situation is we vote on tribal lines. Yes. Whether you like it or not, that is, that's a reality. Yeah. But we want to move to the ideal level mm -hmm. where 
tribe will no longer be a consideration. And what we have done contributes to the desired end that uh, we should not consider the present scenario, the, 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 the scenario which I consider as the, real, the ideal, Mr. the, the Mokwere, realistic. How, how is that so? If indeed we, we go by your first uh, rationale, which is tribal, or, 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 or where you come from, region, mm. and in my calculation, you, you have brought basically the, the three biggest history. communities together. Whether we like it or not, God created these communities. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you see, in, in Britain, the British came up with the, um, said, if you can't beat them, join them. Do you know that was, that started in their democratic uh, development when they realized that the English are more than the Welsh, the Scottish, and Irish put together. So, and they also vote on tribal lines, by the way. The others decided, look, if you cannot beat them, join them. And they are living happily. Okay. They are no let's, let's look at, let's, let's. Uh, because they know whether they like it or not, God created a certain group <laughs> bigger than yes. group X. Uh, and in order to live harmoniously, you just join them. Okay, we have to take a Because you cannot beat them. And that's what you're trying to do. We have to live harmoniously. I'm a digo. I would love to be president of this country, but for goodness sake. You have no chance. Yeah, based on the present day rationale. And we are killing that gradually so that we have an ideal situation where we say, Mr. Njau, <laughs> irrespective of which community comes from, in, is in, the in right fact, person. It's a interesting fact. picture, but we do have to take a break now. David, please hold your thought. Um, when Cheche returns, uh, we continue our discussion really about the uh, international implications of um, the alliance that you've uh, struck, but also this uh, interesting um, perspective on tribalism that you've been um, uh, sharing with us. Uh, you're watching Cheche live on Citizen TV. I need to go see Dr. Charles. So you've chosen your career over us? Of course not. Well, that's what it looks like. You've been talking to Pendo, haven't you? Today is my lucky day. No. I've got a choice of dumb and dumber. Huh? Why don't you just give up already? Yeah, politics is a dirty game. And besides, it's a man's work. Women can do what men can do. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you around. Yeah, you continue littering in the streets as if your kids will eat dust for nutrition. Ladies, don't you think you're carrying this too far? Makareta, mm -hmm. if we expect to have good leaders, then we have to be good citizens. Yes. So I have decided that away with you, the corrupt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Makutano Junction, only on Citizen TV. Good morning. If you're just joining us, you're watching Cheche live on Citizen TV. Today's guest is Environment Minister and Matuga MP Chirao Ali Makwere. Um, we've been talking about uh, the international um, repercussions of uh, <laughs> the alliance that you represent, TNA, URP, UDF, and the Republican Congress Party. Um, and you have been uh, describing to us um, this uh, reality and ideal situation that we're trying to move into. Um, but several viewers, there is some support for your party in the ticket, but there are those who believe that um, bringing Musale Mudavadi and his UDF party on, on board was to address the reality of the uh, ICC suspects and to ensure that... Um, he becomes president, really. Um, how would you respond to that point of view? That was uh, Makali's argument. That was M uh, uh, David's uh, argument. Several viewers have um, um, shared the same opinion. Be honest with Kenyans. Yeah. Yes. Let me be honest with Kenyans <laughs> as I've always been. <laughs> <laughs> Musalia Mudavadi did not come to us as an individual. It is his party which he leads. Which we know 
if I may stop a little bit, yeah. that a party was formed, a party called UDF, by a, a group of about 15 members of parliament and some other people said he was not there at all. He was in ODM. After he quit ODM, it's when he was invited to, the, to join this party. And we know the origin of the party. It was not his. He was invited to be the presidential candidate. Is well, it not a fact? It's as, it's as much a fact as me having shown interest in UDM those days before we formed URP. It's just a question of an individual deciding which party he considers most appropriate for the advancement of our democratic uh, uh, governance in the country. So, yes, he joined that party. Yes, his party and our parties have great similarities. Yes, we want to form a government that is all embracing to project a true picture of Kenya, not one that is tribal in nature. Yes, we appreciate that people vote on tribal lines. However, that is the situation we're in now, and we're trying to break that barrier to get to a situation where meritocracy will be the rationale for decision making. What is the and difference we've between... we've made tremendous stride in this uh, situation. What is the difference between your um, alliance and the other alliance that um, was uh, unveiled yesterday, the ODM, Wiper, um, what is Charities Party, Ford all, all of uh, Ford Kenya, all of those alliances, because you, you're all saying those, the, the same thing. The, yes, we are, we, are, we are looking into, we are taking our experiences of the past to improve the future. But they say the same thing. No. They are dwelling on the past and trying to make mountains out of mole hills of the past or refusing to level to improve the ground of our bitter past but keep on reminding people and dwelling on the past with no meaningful agenda for the future. So th th it's a very clear distinction. When you hear them talk, they'll talk of we are the greatest reformers, something that we all did together, and that is history. They talk of all these people how we fight each other. They're talking of the past. We're saying we know the what happened in the past, but we are now preparing for a better future. They're okay. dwelling on the past, reminding people to raise sentimental, you know, consideration based on the past. That's not what we're doing. What are you doing? We're taking, we're recognizing what happened in the past. And we are posing the question, what shall we do to improve our situation in Kenya for a better tomorrow? Several that's of so our that's viewers, the, that's the difference. Several of our viewers raised the recent past. Timothy in Kitale, the minister is playing with Kenyan minds. If Uhuru and Ruto are sure that their union um, is for peace um, between the two communities, they should first settle the IDPs back in their original land. Um, this from Lemayan in Kajado. Does Makwara know that people died, many properties were destroyed, women were raped? Does he condone these acts when he says the ICC will deny us democracy um, and we Kenyans through politics? said we want the ICC. Ngoga in Nairobi, if Uhuru and R Ruto have united, why then do we st still have IDPs and camps? Now, that is a question that uh, I'm even shocked that an individual would ask at this moment in time. Three, several. The government has taken a lot of initiatives, spent a lot of money to address the question of IDPs. Yes, those who are um, injured, those who are maimed, those who are raped, those who are, will have, have their cases addressed by our courts and even the international court. Initially, the country had no confidence in the judiciary. But we have sorted that one out. We have a judiciary which has uh, presented itself in a manner that has created greater confidence in the minds of Kenyans. We are going to use the courts to address legal issues. We don't, we will not take everybody to the ICC. There are only four people going, but those who committed crimes are thousands. And we have, we, we, it, 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 the, the one who made that comment, I wish to know his name and number because I'll call him. He's trying to project us as people who are heartless. No, we are seriously concerned. 
And we'll like if you are concerned, you would not people. say that the International Criminal Com uh, Court will, will be interfering, interfering with our with democracy. Precisely. Yeah. That is one of the people that uh, supports that ICC. He's a Kenyan as well. Those are three but people so far. The interference of the ICC, if we elect either or both Mr. Ruto and Mr. Uhuru, has nothing to do with the question of cases being presented to courts of law. Cases will be presented to courts of law. Cases will be considered by um, legally accepted courts, whether international or local. It has got nothing directly to do with the fact that we choose our leaders democratically. Y we are mixing two issues here. It's, we, we, I'll be denied my democratic right if they remove my leader, if he happens to be one of the suspects. We are not why mixing why issues up. That? You are. But because if your and then that is, is done with a threat that if we elect them, then we are going to face one, two, three. Mr. Maybe there will be no aid. That, that is threat no, to Kenya. No, Mr. Makwere. These people are answering Those charges. Those are hate speeches. No. You have had experience with hate speech, so you know what hate speech is. So it's a fantasy to come First here all, and we'll tell come us. To that matter. No, no, no. It's, it's a fantasy to come here and start accusing everybody who shows concern about this country's reputation of hate speech. Okay, these people are accused of grave crimes against the public that they want to represent, against the public that they're supposed to be defending. And the public is writing in, asking, now there are those who support them, there are those who will choose to vote them, regardless of the criminal charges they face, but there are others who are concerned about electing leaders or having leaders who are um, accused and who could be convicted of these crimes. If they are elected as our leaders, I think Kenyans will have sent a message to the international community too that these people whom we are taking as suspects are innocent. That is the interpretation. No, not but at all. it does not, not at mean. All. Oh, yes. Not at all. Oh, yeah. How can, they be, suppose how can they be innocent and they, there's pending cases in court? Once they get their 50% plus one. not 50, only that, you've told us about the reality one, of our voting patterns. You know, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you're one of ours, as long as you're from my community. But, but for goodness sake, if there are people who suffered most in 2007, then it's the Kikuyus and Kalenjins. Others suffered all right. Yes. I'm not excluding them. And when these two communities have come together, say, now, look, let's not dwell on the past. Let's prepare for the future. Is it the communities? This country is more important than individuals or even institutions as such. Mm -hmm. Let's address your application of the law yes. there is, is a, a must say let's and address unacceptable. our concerns. Crimes are committed against individuals. Those people who lost, who were killed, uh, uh, whose property was destroyed, who lost their shambas and so forth, are not communities. They're individuals ar around whom justice must be built. That is why there are these cases. But it's individuals so you can't, who, who make communities. You cannot, you yeah? cannot. It's individuals who make communities. So you cannot separate the two. Also, maybe, uh, uh, maybe uh, I, I don't disagree with you. Yes. I'm only emphasizing the fact that, yes, they're individuals. But in the final analysis, it's individuals who make communities. It would be nice if those no. people who suffered this came and said, we have forgiven, forgiven each yes. other. We lost this, they, but they, they don't they, mind. We are building on the no. future. But these people but are nowhere in the picture. For no. no, the courts must um, um, do their work and give their judgment. Those cases must be heard in our courts of law. What about, the, what about their case? Their own cases? The two? The two. Well, well, I, yeah. told, I told you they will comply. As no, individuals, no, no. I put they it will to comply. You, Wazir, I put it if, to you. If, if they will Let's be required to go to the Hague, they will go. But then the, the point on. is, the point is, if 100% of Kenyans say, now look, these are our leaders, and then the international community says they must be removed from Kenya, be tried at the Hague, won't, don't you take it that the international community will be interfering with the democratic rights of Ms. Kenya? Mishmio, I take it that, in fact, what you are saying in, in a circumlocutor's way is that these people are running for office. Once they take office, they'll use that as a defense mechanism, not no. to go to the ICC. No. No. In okay. short, no. the that, that, that is the, the position, in fact.
No, I think uh, maybe we did not communicate as such. Can you go to cause points? Your, what are... Let him answer the question and we will move on. My answer is the two gentlemen are suspects. The two gentlemen have not refused to go to The Hague to, uh, to answer those charges. What I'm saying is Kenyans will choose their leaders democratically. And I also would like to remind the international community that this country is bigger than individuals. And if the majority of Kenyans have chosen their leaders, please don't deny us our democratic right of enjoying leadership from the people whom we shall have chosen. Whether it will be Mr. Kenyatta or Mr. Ruto or Mr. Mudavadi or any other person, please don't interfere with our democratic rights. We would like our leaders to lead us. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll move on um, because, of course, um, you um, uh, may be facing hate speech charges. Um, we thought you had been cleared, but then um, the Muhuri group, the lobby group, came up and said they hadn't quite, um, they'd forgiven you, but they still wanted to pursue the case through the courts. Where, where's that matter now? I don't know. I'm hearing it from you now here. No. I'm, I'm, I'm a stranger to what you're saying. No. Tell me. No, 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 no. As far as I'm concerned, there Actually, was let's, let's address this quickly. Us. How did you sort this matter out? How did you negotiate? Did you pay them and say, Chief, you guys? I mean, we've got to move forward. Everybody and knows then, that. Or uh, what happened? Everybody knows that Chirao Ali Mokwere does not have that kind of money. He's as clean as a pin. He has lived, Which kind of money? Uh, he has right? lived on his salaries <laughs> and uh, the little farming that he does at home. <coughs> yeah. You know. So what happened? How did you sort this out? It's very rare in this country that somebody accused of a crime goes and sorts out with the complainant and they come to court to register or agree, uh, 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 register some sort of settlement which the court accepts. I would, I would be very happy to expound on that. But you've just told me that uh, there is still okay, a case. I, I, don't, I don't discuss actually, matters that I thought. <laughs> actually, answer, answer I was not, that's why I said I was not okay. aware of what you're telling answer me. Answer David's so question, I David's and then question. I will um, um, bring it back to um, that development. Start us off with uh, where uh, you are could and how you... Repeat, could you repeat your question? How David? did you sort out, out of court, a matter that was criminal? The way we know it, it's like... What you have said is a precedent that we have not known in this country. Okay. I can kill somebody and go and meet the uh, relatives Somebody. and agree that this murder charges uh, should not hold. And we go to court and say, let's drop this matter. The complainants have refused. Yet this is an offense, Macquarie versus the Republic. How did this happen? Now, to equate that with the murder is... No, it's just is the fact that right. they're all criminal. They're not civil matters. That's why I'm just... This using shows that, as an that uh, Kenyans are people who are considerate, understanding, and advocate for peace and harmony amongst themselves, that uh, when mistakes are made, it is important that we create a healing process. Mm. We have five and minutes what to they end did, the show, so. what they did yes. contributes to that. What, what happened? What happened is uh, eventually we accepted apologies and uh, advanced on that to prove to Kenyans that uh, certain problems, some problems, need not be sorted out in a court of law. After all, if uh, it can be sorted out out of court in a manner that creates greater harmony, understanding, and peace, yes. and cohesion amongst communities, that is truly the best way. Were you parties. really apologetic? Well, what's the difference? I don't know why you're asking that question. <laughs> I don't know. Because you know, you're a politician. It, it, uh, what is happening proves it all because we're living as brothers and sisters in the communities where I come from. Why, what is the, why, what's your view about MRC? MRC, what my view on what? Uh, MRC for what? Mombasa Republican Council. And, uh, and their the politics and what they represent what they stand for as the, the problems they highlight are the same that have been highlighting for years questions regarding land uh, education health um, employment 
marginalization of some sort over the years. I totally agree with those concerns. What I disagree with is the um, intervention, the, 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 the intervention modes that will address those problems. The approach is totally different from mine. Mine is solution by discussion at a round table like this. Theirs is better known by themselves, but I totally disagree with their intervention okay. mode. Just to and um, I also totally disagree with their position that uh, um, a section of the country is not part of this great nation. That to me is also totally um, wrong and uh, the conclusion is uh, totally unjustified. Okay. We're so you cannot balance them? I told because you. I know some politicians. I, I told you I live on my salaries and the little farming that I'm doing. <laughs> so, okay, okay, the Coast Province uh, has for a long time uh, complained of lacking major role in the national political uh, arena. You, since my, Maitha, since the late Maitha passed, you had attempted or you were perceived to be filling that position of the, of the leader of the Coast people, especially the indigenous people, the Mijikenda. You bid for running mate for Uru, uh, rather for William Ruto. Yes. Then uh, all of a sudden again you fizzle out. And the people at the coast disappointed that none of you is aiming high enough. There's a rivalry no. between In this, and Balala. All these political alignments. The people of the coast are not disappointed. I've always given them my message that the coast must be in government. As simple as that. Because all we want is development, meaningful development, together with the rest of Kenya. But if you are not in government, you want to be seen to be opposing the government or creating problems, surely you reap very little. Right, but why are you not going for the big seat? To get government itself rather than just being inside? Bigger seat than being in government? Being president? I think being in government is the biggest seat. You know, it's a question of whether somebody cracked a joke the other day. He said... He'd rather be a total man than being um, a president. It's something like that. <laughs> but that's besides the point here now. What I'm saying here is the most important thing for Coastals to do is to ensure that they're in government. And I would like to lead them into government. I've always been in government. Some did not agree with me, but they've all agreed that the most important achievement is to be in government. So not in, in, this, in, this, in this next government, where do you expect to be? I'll be one of the major decision makers. And I'm sure nothing will be done without um, consultation of some sort that what, will involve what, what are you vying for? And that in itself brings the cost into government. What are you vying for? I will settle for a senatorial position. Okay. I'm vying to be a senator. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. We are out of time. Um, and so our thanks to the uh, Honorable Chirao Ali Mwakwere, the Environment Minister and Matuga MP, for being our guest this morning. Our thanks also to panelists Matege Njao and David Makali. I'm Udwa Kamimo. Enjoy the rest of your week.